isn't nicotine dangerous? So uh, there, there are a few myths that fall under this category. And uh, one of the ones that we hear kind of ad nauseum is uh, that uh, e-liquid contains more nicotine than cigarettes. And this seems to have come from a misrepresentation between the difference uh, uh, between uh, nicotine content versus nicotine yield from cigarettes and also ignoring the different delivery methods. So uh, cigarettes are widely considered the most effective way to deliver nicotine to the brain. Um, in the US, cigarettes can contain between 10 and 12 milligrams of nicotine per cigarette. I think the highest is like Newport's at, at 15 milligrams. Um, so a pack of 20 cigarettes contains 200 to 240 milligrams of nicotine. But most of the nicotine is either burned away as part of the side stream smoke uh, or exhaled by the person smoking. Uh, and the nicotine yield, what we actually get is about one to two milligrams per cigarette or 20 to 40 milligrams per pack. So e-liquid is of course, typically labeled with the nicotine by weight per milliliter of liquid. So for example, Juul states on its website that the 5% pods contain about 59 milligrams per milliliter of nicotine uh, which anti-harm reduction groups then represent to the public as being, quote, more than a pack of cigarettes. Uh, however, uh, the Juul website also states that a pod only contains 0.7 milliliters of liquid, which means the 5% pods actually only contain about 40 milligrams of nicotine. 3% pods contain 35 milligrams per uh, per milliliter per 0.7 milliliter pod, or about 23 milligrams of nicotine. So the pods contain less nicotine than typical packs of U.S. cigarettes. And when it comes to yield and effective delivery, there has been very little independent research on how vaping compares to smoking. But according to uh, research funded by Juul on its own products, uh, the, uh, they concluded that the Juul pods deliver nicotine in concentrations similar to cigarettes. It could be a little bit more. It could be a little bit less. It's similar. Um, but that's about it. Uh, depending on the experience and the preference of the user, this may be higher or lower than what people experience when smoking. Uh, vaping causes heart attacks. Uh, this claim was largely popular, popularized by an erroneous study published in 2019 that was subsequently retracted in 2020, um, although it's not the only one. Uh, the authors of this study claim they found that vaping was associated with increased risk of having a myocardial infarction, infarction <clears throat> even after controlling for a history of cigarette smoking. However, what the researchers did not disclose is that the majority of the heart attacks occurred before the user started vaping, rendering the conclusions null and void and resulting in the study being retracted by the Journal of the American Heart Association. Um, all of that to say, nicotine use is not without risk, especially for those with pre-existing cardiovascular issues, but there is a sub there's substantial evidence that switching from cigarette smoking to vaping significantly improves vascular health. Mm -hmm. And we'll round this topic category out by going into e-cigarettes don't help people quit smoking. Studies conclude that vapor products do help people quit smoking. Most notable is a randomized controlled clinical trial published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2019, which found that nicotine containing vapor products were nearly twice as effective as traditional nicotine replacement therapies <clears> like <throat> gums and patches to help people quit smoking. A little uh, caveat on that is that both of these products were tested uh, in addition to counseling. Um, additionally, the higher, highly respected Cochrane Library published an updated analysis of e-cigarettes for smoking cessation in 2020, which found moderate certainty evidence that quit rates were higher for people using nicotine vapor products than with traditional nicotine replacement therapies. Cochrane's conclusions were based on a meta-analysis of 50 different studies across 13 different countries. Does vaping cause diseases? Right, and the first topic on that is vaping causes popcorn lung. We can get that up there. Um, so according to Cancer Research UK, CRUK, there are no confirmed cases of popcorn lung, otherwise known as bronchiolitis obliterans, in people who use e-cigarettes. And there's no evidence that e-cigarettes could cause popcorn lung. 
Uh, the name, if you don't know, the name comes from an incident involving people who were working in a popcorn factory. They were breathing in the chemical called, a chemical called diacetyl or diacetyl, depending on how you want to say it, who developed this rare condition. Um, it has a buttery flavor. Um, and it was an ingredient at one time that was used in vaping liquids. It was an artificial butter flavor and or had a creamy flavor, but buttery tasting. Um, and that's why it was used. But due to an overabundance of caution, most manufacturers, as soon as this came out, discontinued use. Um, by comparison, though, which you'll never see them talk about, is that combustible cigarettes themselves also contain uh, diacetyl. And from what we understand, at a much higher level than would ever have been found in vapor products. And uh, popcorn lung has never been associated with smoking. Uh, next one is uh, vaping causes lungs to collapse. Uh, there's been several counts of young adults experiencing primary spontaneous pneumothorax, if I'm saying that right, and I'm going to shorten that to PSP for the rest of this, uh, that news headlines blamed on vaping. Uh, for example, an article from July 2022, the headline uh, had a headline that read, I quote, young woman rushed to hospital with collapsed lung after vaping. However, the article then goes on to clearly state that she had suffered the PSP, which um, was and then they said, uh, this is not directly caused by vaping in the article. The young woman is quoted as stating, it literally spontaneously popped because I'm tall and thin. And in fact, all of the cases we've read about these have been reported, that have been reported as allegedly linked to vaping, had patients with that same high risk profile. Um, PSP usually occurs in tall, thin people between 10 to 30 years old, and research has found that smoking appears to increase the risk, uh, but so does strange things like sexual activity and loud music. Um, researchers also found that some genetic mutations can increase the risk, and uh, occurrences are more common during weather changes and midterm or final term seasons for students. Um, a case study published in 2021 of a 19-year-old male acknowledges that quote, vaping has not yet been established as a risk factor for pneumothorax. But then the authors claim that, quote, it is well on its way to doing so as more and more cases come to light, such as ours. However, despite implying that they'd shown a link between vaping and PSP, they failed to mention that at five foot eight and just 134 pounds, their subject already fit that high risk profile for PSP, even without having ever vaped. He had also been smoking both cigarettes and marijuana prior prior to searching, uh, switching to vaping a year earlier. And ironically, the researchers also reported in their, in their study, quote, to this day, our patient has avoided e-cigarettes, but unfortunately has gone back to smoking cigarettes and marijuana daily. Uh, next one after that is vaping causes brain damage. The claim comes from a handful of studies exposing rodents to high levels of nicotine. Mice brains are not equivalent to human brains. So this conclusion is far from solid. In fact, there's no evidence to support the idea that nicotine damages the adolescent brain. If there were, it would be visible in the multiple generations of adults who began smoking as teenagers. Furthermore, there's ample research to suggest that nicotine may have some neuroprotective qualities. Okay, next one is vaping causes seizures. Well, in 2019, I think is when it started. The FDA expressed concern over a possible link between youth nicotine vaping and seizures but no causal link has ever been established. Nicotine inhaled from tobacco cigarettes has never been shown to cause, cause seizures, so it seems unlikely that nicotine inhaled from e-cigarettes would, especially since vapor products do not deliver the same nicotine yield as cigarettes. Additionally, the evidence gathered by FDA consisted of only 122 reports over nine years. So 122 reports of seizures over nine years, and the cases varied widely in the timing of the seizures, uh, in relation to vaping. We'll get into some of the, the, the myths about vaping here. Uh, and so the first one being vaping exposers, exposes users to more formaldehyde than cigarettes. Uh, this claim comes from a single defective study published in 2019 in the New England Journal of Medicine in which researchers overheated e-cigarette devices effectively burning the wicking material instead of aerosolizing the liquid. Uh, this phenomenon referred to as dry hits or dry puffs uh, is well known by people who use vapor products because of the harsh and intolerable flavor it produces. Dry puffing a vapor device is the only way to achieve these high levels of formaldehyde, but due to the extreme level of discomfort, it this is not how people use the products. We typically immediately stop vaping when this happens, 
uh, as it means something is wrong with the device. Um, this same experiment was reproduced in 2017 by researchers more familiar with how vaping devices work. And the research was conducted with participation from actual vapors. Mm. They found that achieving high formaldehyde levels was essentially impossible in a normal use scenario because, as noted, people could not tolerate the accompanying level of discomfort and foul taste. Yeah. When used properly and under normal conditions, a person's exposure to formaldehyde from vaping is well within levels considered to be safe. Um, so moving on to the next one, uh, vaping exposes users to heavy metals. Um, heavy metals have been detected in some vapor products at varying levels, some concerning, some not. Researchers have theorized that metals found in some products could be leaching from the heating element or coils. Uh, which is used to heat the liquid. But in some cases, the testing methods used in these studies have been called into question. Overheating the coils, as we just discussed with formaldehyde, uh, failing to account for metals from testing equipment, and not excluding participants who were still smoking are all potential causes of abnormally high results. While the presence of any level of heavy metals is a, a concern, they are just one component contributing to the potential risk from cigarette smoke. Uh, the fact that vapor products contain far lower levels of other carcinogens and toxins and none of the carbon monoxide and harmful particulates found in cigarette smoke cannot be overlooked. As the overall benefits of switching to vaping still outweigh the risks of smoking, Ideally, regulation should allow manufacturers to develop products that would mitigate the risk of metals leaching into liquid. Uh, E-liquids contain harmful oils. Uh, nicotine vaping liquids have a base of propylene glycol and or vegetable glycerin or some combination of the two. Uh, neither of these liquids are oil or oily. Both products are water and alcohol soluble, which is necessary for adding nicotine to the solution. Propylene glycol is considered a diol, diol, thank you, <laughs> or double alcohol. Uh, and vegetable glycerin is a sugar alcohol. And to avoid starting yet another myth, neither of these types of alcohol cause intoxication like <laughs> ethyl alcohol, which is the type of alcohol found in adult beverages. Um, how, uh, Anti-tobacco harm reduction propaganda often conflates THC vapor products which do use an oil base with nicotine products, uh, often implying they are identical other than the active ingredient. For example, as recently as 2020, a Johns Hopkins web article about the effect of vaping on lungs wrongly claims that e-liquid concoctions, <sighs> e-liquid concoctions usually include some mix of flavorings, aromatic additives, and nicotine or THC dissolved in an oily liquid base. In reality, nicotine liquid is no more similar to THC liquid as cooking wine is to olive oil. <laughs> E-liquids contain antifreeze. Uh, no, the truth of the matter is that vaping liquids contain the ingredient propylene glycol, or as we call it, PG, which is, which is an ingredient used in antifreeze. This myth leaves out uh, the fact that PG is also a common food additive and it's used in antifreeze as a replacement for ethylene glycol in order to make antifreeze safer and non-toxic. Um, and we'll round out the bunch here with e-liquid exposure is hospitalizing thousands of young children. Um, no. No. Uh, news and the CDC have reported that more than half of the calls to poison control centers that were due to e-cigarettes involved young ch children under the age of five, uh, which gave the impression that there were thousands of children being hospitalized or even dying from ingesting e-liquid. But those calls included people who were simply asking a question and did not reflect the actual number of poisonings. A study of actual hospital ER visits for all ages revealed that just 4.1% of the cases resulted in a patient being admitted to the hospital. Since that study, uh, I'm going to say child resistant packaging has been required for e-liquid. That is federal law and states have come back and uh, and adopted it in, in updated their own statutes to include that. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Speaking of regulation. Well, Speaking of, of regulations. <laughs> All right. 
So um, that's an, another claim is that e-cigarettes are not regulated. Uh, but as of August 8th, 2016, all new nicot nicotine products introduced to, into the market after February 15th, 2007 uh, must go through pre-market review by FDA. While PMTA enforcement did not begin until September 2019, vapor products have existed under some form of regulation at the state and local level since 2009. If marketed as a smoking cessation or any other therapeutic product, nicotine falls under the FDA's jurisdiction over drugs and devices. So they can't make medical claims because the FDA will come after them. The U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia stated as much in its ruling against the FDA in 2010 when the agency attempted to stop e-cigarettes from being imported into the U.S. as unapproved drugs or delivery devices. <laughs> e-cigarette batteries explode often. And this is our last one. E-cigarettes use lithium ion batteries, the same battery chemistry used in many cell phones, laptops, and other consumer electronics. While battery explosions and fires can happen with any of these products, usually due to improper use or a manufacturing defect, it is generally rare. The U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission reported over 25,000 fire incidents from lithium battery powered consumer products over a five year period. Now, in comparison to that, and that's other products, in comparison to that, a study examined that there were 3,000 ER visits over a four year period for vape related explosions. That's not that alarming if you compare 3,000 for vapes over 20 compared to in four years for 25,000 for other, all the other products. It's not that alarming. Even the FDA says it is pretty rare. And like it, like it said, a lot of times people are, they say his vape exploded in his pocket. And it's really just they put batteries in a pocket with change. <laughs> so headlines often mislead with that one too.